you are running at the speed of light. Okay, I'm going to just try to bring, yes, the, <laughs> bring, bring, the, bring the audience on. So if we say it's wrong, very easy to say. What is right? What is really we talk about the election? Really, what it is? He mentioned about it. So if we cannot have a single charged particle, what happens? The so-called electron. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Are carried both positive and the negative charge as one, as one particle. Case. Now I wanted to question the audience: What kind of particle in this world? I know everybody since three years old. You you know this this term. What carry both of the charge? Do you have a guess? Hydrogen. Everything. Oh, you are talking about, uh, you know, in the kind of terms. Sorry, you know, sorry. I'm talking about uh, in terms of what type of a particle. Now, now that time. Magnets. Yes. Magnets is the one that carries both negative and positive charges. And I will explain, this, uh, you know, the misconception mm -hmm. about the charge and the magnetism. Uh, yeah. But so, 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 so called, we so called the electron is actually. Dipolar magnets. Why does this matter? What Great does this questions. reveal? Uh, let, let me expand. Let, uh, let's, let's, let's say. Please. Because of we assuming electron is a negative charge particle. So then, you know, there's a, there's a great news Bohr. Build his Bohr's model, right? Yeah. Build the Bohr's model, say, hey, we have a positive charge, nucleus. And we have a negative charge of the electron. How can we can we measure them? Because we assume mm -hmm. atoms are neutral, neutralized, right? How can we measure them with a, with a negative particle and positive particle? And the one assumption is that they are not can, they cannot be in contact. Once they are in contact, that's create matter antimatter annihilation. So if they are not in contact, how does atomic model has to work to prevent? Negative charge and the neutron and 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 the uh, protons in the nucleus attract them each other. It has to be rotated. It has to yeah. rotate, create a sp uh, revolution, or we can. Spin. And this is what I was saying. The spin is is not because of some spinners. The spin is coming from the the balance of of action and reaction because of the resistance the spin has to occur because everything in the universe is balanced in, in order for it to interact it has to spin around it and that, which means that it is a finite and confined space because otherwise it would just keep moving away from each other but the fact that it spins tighter so rotation is required to create a uh, centrifugal force to balance the magnetic electromagnetic attraction so that's where comes the Bohr's model. And this model is built based on negative charge particle and the positive charge, positive charge in the nucleus. If both the nucleus and the electron protons are magnetic particles, they are. Are they gonna have this rotating? Do they need this rotating? No. They are naturally connected. So atomic model, so what I found, atomic model has no rotation part whatsoever. In, in, in atomic model. There's no rotation, it's only what the parts may vibrate. It's all vibratory oscillations. Obviously, that's how light's created, due to vibration. Everything waves. is resonance, nothing, there is no solid matter. There is, it's not a force-based universe, it's a harmony-based universe. And therefore, that's why uh, everything has the prime resonant frequency by which it bonds or break bonds. You can manipulate anything into anything else by creating the right harmonic or resonant conditions. That's everything that we've been talking about. It's we don't need, the reason it's important is now you're able to manipulate the universe without hurting the universe. We don't have to use barbaric measures anymore. We can now take the subspace in energy that's coming from the, another thing, they've gotten rid of the ether. Now this entire thing, is so they've created all these other particles to carry these charges, all these particles to carry these charges that used to be carried by the ether. They got rid of the ether, and then it was like, but white ha light has to be carried on a wave. 
The ether has always been that wave, but what we've proven with the wave conjugations, back to the other question you asked, the wave conjugations, the linchpin and the all shapes, mirrored all shapes, these create the conditions of the ether. They define the ether in itself that allows all this stuff to move. And what they're angry about is not that I just have the patents, but also the super grand unifying supersymmetry plus now the equations that prove everything that I've been saying. That's why I wanted you to see the papers before. Yeah. And the three-body problem, solving that now with the idea of the proton and the, the energy of the electron, now we're able to manipulate the universe's energy. By rebuilding the planet Saturn without gravity, now we can use that, now we can manipulate the energy of the universe to create any condition we want. Now that's the end of oil. That's the end of big tech because they have to change everything out. But that's going to happen anyway because we're behind the gun. Are you considered a rebel amongst your peers? Would they consider you a rebel or no? Um, I believe uh, some generally outside my circle, they, uh, you know, because I basically keep my uh, discovery uh, in house and everything. I, when I do did a lot of uh, lecturing or uh, public speaking to university and uh, conference, any have a serious talk with a phys physicist, they would agree with me after normally half hour or one hour conversation, they would agree with me. Uh, let me let me extend your questions. You ask great questions. What's the significance? If electrons are not a single charged particle, it's actually a dipolar magnet. So they are impossible to have an atomic model with something orbiting around a positive charged particle. It was naturally connected. So in, in a real atom, like all the images with technology, we all see tech, just like a lattice shape of the, 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 the sesame ball, you know, the mm -hmm. lattice shape. They have a they have an elastic, that means they have a distance, but they, they cannot separate it. You know, they have an elastic to recovery. Um, so the significance is if there is no principle uh, orbit, right? So there is no such concept of quantum jump, quantum leap, which is a very, very controversial art concept at the time during the year, you know, uh, Niels Bohr proposed this mm -hmm. one. Because in, in reality, the solar, solar. Let's use the solar solar system. You don't see a planet jump into another orbit out of nowhere. The planets don't just Mercury doesn't jump into Venus's orbit. That's what he's talking about. None of these stuff. There was none of these huge jumps that that they were predicting with the electron model. Can you pull that up, Rob? Because I, I fully understand what he's saying, but I want to visually show it. So orbit meaning if there is one. Just look not up gonna... electron orbit. Yeah, if you looked up, look up the electron orbit. Go to images. And they believe that electrons spontaneously jump into That's a good orbit. orbit. Yeah. Who, S1, who's S2, they? S2. Who's they? Um, Eric Weinstein, the standard model, their whole thing. Standard model of particle physics. It's hmm. all based on the quantum But you have to match orbits. it. You're supposed to match it to natural phenomena. Can you imagine if the Earth out of nowhere just jumped into Mars's orbit, what that would do to the solar system, and have you ever experienced that in observing any of the other solar systems? Because what's large happens on the small, and what happens on the small happens on the large because it all has to fit together. You can't have imaginary stories of, okay, this happens in the quantum space, but it's prevented from happening in the macro space. Can, can, you, can I yes, please. enforce this concept? This quantum jump is different than solar orbit, say Mercury suddenly mm. due to external drift. force drift to different orbits. It's a totally different concept. In quantum mechanics, everything's fixed, and this jump cannot be continuous through space and time. It's not space time, okay? Through space and time. It cannot say somehow from this one to other one, you cannot go through the space. You cannot have a time difference. It happens instantaneously. How that happens? It is you have to, the matter has to, like Earth, has to entirely disappear, become a virtual pair. 
And the instant they appear on the other. It has to vaporize orbit. and become a different pressure condition so that it can now fit into the next pressure condition. Solid things fit in solid spaces and tight, tight high pressure systems. Um, vacuous things fit in low pressure conditions. And in order for the Earth or for anything, an, an electron, it has to change its condition. And that's, that happens. It's called, it's, it's, it's called condensation. Everything happens in the condensation of one pressure condition compared to the next pressure condition. And that condensation flips to the next space. It remains consistent. That's the crystallization. And that's what they've been lacking, having the platonic solids utilizing them as a base, this Cartesian space that doesn't fit the universe, how it behaves, they're now getting blocks to where they can fit, make something fit linearly. But by the time, but when we're talking about space and space is curvature, you can't do a straight line out here because everything is going to orbit this way. The reason the three body problem was a big problem because they could never dictate how the orbits were going to behave. They could do it with two bodies, but anytime you added a third body, it went into chaos. Well, us being able to solve the three body problem, which I can't wait till you get a chance to look at and go through, but that's why I was asking you guys, please put it into your AI and see what the AI says, because the AI says, all of the AI says, all it's lacking now is being verified that we've actually solved the problem, but what that allows us to do now is have being able to move in space because we can predict where these orbits are going to go. It's no longer a chaos-based world because now the world is based on harmony. It can be predicted, and they've made money from the loss and from the lack of understanding, and the, we are able to solve the Heisenberg um, problem. We're able to, to manipulate the Schrodinger equation, the Dirac equation, all of those papers we've done from the Howard comma having the right geometry. It was they missed the geometry. That's what they've been missing this entire time, and the fundamentals. Like, what's your thoughts on the universe? Is it finite or is it infinite? Or, or is it infinite? Of course, infinite. You think infinite? Yes. Now, I say it's finite, and this is the reason why. Um, if you were to take anything inside the universe, um, let's say a pebble, and you drop it into a pond, and again, it expands out. If the universe was infinite, that would just expand out forever and would never come back. But because of the fight, but once the pebble, once those expanding waves hit the edge of the pond and start returning back, they're hitting more expanding waves. And now they're creating the standing waves. These standing waves are the first geometry. So the proof of who we are, the fact that we have shape, happens not because we have shape from something inside pulling in. It's the returning waves that's meeting these expanding waves because we're in a confined universe. That, and that confined finite space Having, if everything inside the universe has a boundary, and that boundary is expanding, then this bag holding these, in, these, uh, this universe, this bag of, of um, bounded things, would ultimately be bounded by the very last particle. An object, go ahead. Yes, uh, we have a different definition, understanding about the universe. In me, uh, the universe considers space a three-dimensional space and the time and the time, so, right? Uh, of course, uh, uh, in uh, Ter Terence's explanation, you have a boundary. I believe he was talking about the boundary, so he mentioned about the ether. The so-called the ether, I do believe a light have nothing to do with a particle. Light is a wave. In order for a wave to propagate, wave need a carrier, which is if we do not use uh, the ether. ether, so I would say is electron is a magnetic, of is a, is a mag, mag, magnetic medium, electromagnetic medium. So now let's talk about the, he said that the boundary. I said that the universe's three dimensional space is infinite, and the time is infinite. However, I did not mention say, hey, the medium, the light carrying electromagnetic, the medium has to be infinite. So for, let's say, okay, for each solar system, we may have a concentrated a medium has a boundary. So either traveling to somewhere, uh, coming back, you will see that one, right? Yes. Does not exclude, entire universe does not have a 
vacuum space without even medium. So what happens that to that location? You will never see light. No. However, whenever we can see light from the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago, since we can see the light, so we know there is a field with the medium throughout our vis visible universe. I want to share something. One of the papers that I sent over to you guys, this was the um, abstract, and it was the necessity of a finite universe, a wave-based math mathematical framework. This is what... Wh which one is this? If this you want is to the through? necessity of a finite universe. Rob, do you have right that? There. I do. Okay. Right there. Let me read it. It says the abstract is... This paper rigorously demonstrates why the universe must be a finite system by employing a wave-based multiplication paradigm. The energy conservation principle and the fundamental mathematical relation of 1 times 1 equaling 2, we present mathematical proofs illustrating how finite systems inherently violate, uh, no, how infinite systems inherently violate energy conservation. Furthermore, we derive equations from wave mechanics to show that the wave reflections and conjugations naturally confine energy within a closed harmonic structure, linking the universe to a hypothetical or, or hypothesis to observable cosmic wave front, basically proving ultimately that a finite, an infinite universe is mathematically impossible because of conservation of energy laws. Because if you have an infinite universe, then you can't have, then there's no such thing as having a finite amount of energy in a particular area. When you get to the smaller, the small confined spaces, you end up with problems when you have an in, infinite universe. And that's one of the things I think has been holding people back, but you just said it correctly. The medium is finite. The potential reactions are infinite reactions, but the medium, the space we're in, is a finite space, I would think. Hi, everyone. My name is Terrence Howard. I'm an actor, um, but in the field of science also. So if you would like to connect with me, you can connect with me on Minect. Um, the QR code is down below, and let's have a great conversation. If you enjoy this video, you want to watch more videos like this, click here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click here.